Hey, John Cruz, and I'm going to explain to you all about deep crank basics. And you say, deep crank, what are you talking about? I'm talking about deep crank baits, like these things right here. Now, they're big, hard plastic lures with a big bill on the front that gets those baits down there, and that big bill makes those things wiggle. Now, anything that I consider a deep crank bait is something that's 10 feet or deeper. Nowadays, with all these super deep diving crankbaits, I mean, you can, you can throw a deep diving crankbait to up to 25 feet. This thing will get to 24. There's others that'll get even deeper than that. All the principles for deep cranking are very similar. So whether you're fishing, you know, a super deep crankbait like that, or, you know, something like the Spro Baby DD, that right there is, is more like a 12 foot running crankbait. And then you got some with have rounder sides on it, like the Fat Papa. Uh, that bait runs about 14 feet deep. Uh, but the one I'm gonna show you, and we'll talk most, is, is probably the most common depth range uh, for a bait to run. This is running the 16 to 17 foot range on a normal cast. Uh, this is Spro Little John DD. There are others in this category. Um, so in all the principles, apply to you know these principles apply, apply to all of those crankbaits um, but why why would i throw this thing right okay so why do you want why do you even want to know the deep crank basics it's a big plug it's a big bill that seems like a lot of work i could just throw a worm out there and and then just reel it in real easy like and it doesn't seem like it's near as much work why don't i just do that well i can tell you deep diving crankbaits catch big fish they catch a lot of fish and they can trigger strikes from fish in those deeper depths that have not seen a lure with this type of vibration because a lot of anglers are not familiar with deep cranking. They're not throwing the deep diving crankbaits, but you will be. So getting out there and deep cranking can trigger those bass to bite in those deeper areas that other people are missing. And that's why we're talking about it today. First of all, I wanna, I wanna kinda go over the, uh, the equipment a little bit, then we'll kinda go into the places that you're gonna be looking for, and then I'll show you exactly how to walk through a cast and how to do that. So once you, once you kinda have identified what a deep crankbait is, you wanna make sure you have the right equipment. I like throwing deep crankbaits on a, on a bait caster. There's really not an option to throw them on a spinning rod. Uh, so a bait caster is a must, number one. I like a longer rod. I like at least a seven foot rod. 7.6 is better, 7.11 is even, is even better. And that's, to me, that's about the limit of what you can handle. Now, with that longer rod, you wanna make sure that there's one that's, that's parabolic. As you can see, this rod is very parabolic, meaning that it bends throughout the rod. And there's a couple reasons for that. This is a rod that I, I helped design for caching rods, and it, it is perfectly labeled deep crank rod. It's a 7.11 with a medium heavy parabolic action. There are other good deep crankbait rods on the market. This one is graphite. I highly recommend graphite because it is way more sensitive. You're gonna feel every wiggle that that crankbait makes if you choose the right line. I probably deep crank the most with 12 pound fluorocarbon, but I will go up to 14 pound occasionally if I'm throwing some of those really big extra deep divers or if I wanna um, you know, bang my bait through even heavier cover. But that 12 pound, I use a Sunline Sniper. I think that is really, really good stuff. It makes a long, it can cast a very long distance. Uh, so it's supple and it's strong. It's just a good all around line, but that's what I prefer to use. Uh, but getting yourself a quality fluorocarbon will pay benefits. And then you wanna have, a, I like a six, four to one. Some people like to deep crank with a lower gear ratio reel. I think that you're, you're hurting yourself to, because in order to you know, trigger some of those strikes, you're gonna to have to crank that reel so fast. It's just, it will seem like work. You know, these modern day reels are such good technology. They've got longer handles. They've got bigger pinion gears. A six, four to one reel is not gonna be a lot of work to, to pull a bait like this through the water. It is just not. You pair it up with the right rod, you get the right line, and you get one of these bigger workhorse reels. This is a Daiwa Tatula 150. It's a really good deep cranking reel. Like I said, there are other good deep crank reels, but they're gonna have these bigger frames and they're gonna have a longer handle to help give you a little bit more leverage. So just look for those attributes when you're looking uh, to, to find a reel if you don't have one that's good for, for deep cranking. So now that you kind of got the right equipment, 
let's turn around and go out here and I'll explain to you the types of places you're gonna look for and I'll walk you through a cast, come on. Okay, now that we're getting out here and getting ready to fish, we gotta find what kind of places are you gonna fish? Well, right here, we've got a short little point. I would throw a deep crankbait right here. Now what you've got is a, you got a regular bank and you've got a point that looks like it runs out there. Sometimes the, the fish will be on uh, slower tapering points. Sometimes they'll be on little sharper points. It kind of depends on the lake that you're fishing. But the one key is you're gonna be cranking hard cover. Now you got these treble hooks and you got a bill uh, with, you know, with a lot of space here. So if you're gonna be throwing it into any type of soft cover, A, that's not where the fish are and B, your bait's not gonna come through it very well. So if you're fishing, let's say grass that's got some moss on it, that's not a place that you wanna deep crank. Uh, if you're fishing an area that's got a lot of mud and leaves and stuff like that, that's areas where the silt is gonna be coming in and the silt is gonna be gathering. That's not a hard bottom, that's not where the fish are gonna be. You wanna be in places like brush piles, on points, uh, on ledges where things drop off. Those are the areas that are gonna have the harder bottoms. That's the area where the fish are gonna be feeding. That's where you wanna be throwing the deep diving crankbait, hitting the hard cover and triggering those strikes. Remember that, hit the hard cover, trigger those strikes with a deep diving crankbait. All right, so you know, now that you can look around and say, all right, now what kind of places are you talking about? Um, you know, like I said, I, I pointed out this, the point right here, other, other areas might be real obvious where the points are. Crank it all. You're gonna crank anywhere, like this bait runs 16, 17 feet deep. I'm gonna throw it where I think it may be eight or 10 feet, all the way out to 16, 17 feet. I'm gonna throw it, I'm gonna let that bait bang against that hard cover on top of those points, on the sides of those points, uh, on, you know, on ridges on you know, ledges where it just might be a big flat and then it drops off. Those areas where the depth change is, is drastic, those are also gonna be hard bottom areas. So now that we kind of established where, you know, where the types of places that we're gonna be looking, uh, if you know where there's some brush piles or if you, uh, you know, maybe even you placed one, not gonna get into that because that may be legal in some areas and not legal in others. But as you wanna make, a, once you get to making a cast, you wanna reel up your bait until it's about a foot to a foot and a half away from your tip. If you have, if you have too much line out like this, you're gonna either hook yourself in the back of the head or you're gonna hit something else in the boat. And if you reel too far up to the tip, you're gonna limit yourself in the leverage that you have with the whip of that rod to be able to cast as far as distance goes because deep cranking is definitely better with a longer cast. So you wanna have that about a foot, foot and a half right there and then remember, we have a parabolic rod, which means it has a lot of bend to it. And that rod is gonna load up and then it's gonna release. So you don't wanna do a quick, snappy cast. You wanna load it up and then, and then kind of a slow, deliberate cast. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk you through one right here. Just, just slow release, coming back, and then hard follow through. Once that bait hits the water, you wanna let it settle for a second and then I like to do kind of a slower to medium retrieve to start with because what I want to do, I want to get that crankbait tracking true and straight back to me before I start picking the paste up. And then once it, once it gets going, then I can start getting a little faster and a little faster and a little faster, maybe stopping and starting. Maybe I'm going to kind of do more of a steady retrieve if I know that bait is banging into the bottom because we got two things going on, deep cranking, it's a, I tell people it's a game of speed. The faster you crank, the more fish you're gonna catch, meaning the more it's gonna trigger those fish into biting, the faster you reel. But the faster you reel, the more you're gonna get hung up. So it's a game, it's a game, perfectly, I mean, it's just a game like anything else. Reel fast enough to where you can get bit, but you wanna make sure that you're you know, being aware of what you're hitting. If you're in a whole lot of cover, then maybe you start that stop and start routine to get that bait to come up off the bottom just a little bit, maybe get it out of the cover just a little bit. Uh, you know, you're causing some erratic behavior by that bait, which is also gonna help uh, trigger more strikes as you're fishing. So as we're gonna make another cast here, let that rod load, 
hard cast, let it, let it settle. I'm gonna start with kind of a slow to medium retrieve. Once it's down there, I'm gonna start picking up the pace, reel a little bit faster. Hit a piece of cover right there, lost the handle. Just gonna keep cranking, bang it into the cover again, stop it real quick, bang it into the cover, stop it real quick, bang it into the cover. And don't worry, you'll know what those fish feel like when, um, when they bite it. There's, there's a couple different types of bites with that deep crankbait. Uh, there are some bites where it just feels like it just stops. And, and a lot of times that's the bigger fish, they'll come up there and just grab it and sit there. And then, you know, you might lean back on them thinking it's either the bottom or, or it could be something. And then those fish will shake their head. You'll know you have a monster on. Or the, a lot of the smaller fish seem to hit it real hard. Uh, and big fish will do that as well. Like they'll, they'll hit it just, I mean, absolutely trying to kill that thing, just charging it. So you're just reeling along, reeling along. You kind of get a feel for what that, what that bait feels like. You know, you might be hitting the bottom, you may not be. And then you're just reeling along and all of a sudden, Ur! they just absolutely trounce it take it the other way i've had some of them man we you know you're cranking and hitting the bottom and then all of a sudden it starts just pulling drag they hit it and they're going the other way and all you got to do is hold on and then the fun begins but uh, that's kind of how the uh, the bites go um, and one of the biggest things that that i would tell you about you know catching fish is a you want to make sure you have super sharp treble hooks because you've got a lot of line out there. You've got a lot of resistance from that water and all, all that whole distance that you, that you are in, you know, in, in the bait is down deep. There's a lot of resistance against that line that prevents you from getting a good hook set. You need to have really as sharp a treble hooks as you can. I like the Gamagatsu treble hooks. Uh, you want to, and, and still, even though they're Gamagatsu, remember that bait is hitting hard cover, bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. Those, those hooks are also bouncing against the bait. They can, I don't care what kind of hooks they are, they can dull over time. Put you some sticky sharp gummies on there or whatever your, your hook preference is and, and you'll ca you land a lot higher percentage of fish. But also, when you, throw that, when you throw that bait out there and you're reeling it in, you hook that fish. You don't wanna hook that fish and then bring your rod tip up. You wanna hook that fish and then bring your rod tip down. You don't want that fish to jump. You want that fish to stay down in the water and um, you know, I heard uh, Kevin Van Dam make a, make a good point one time concerning deep cranking and, and crankbait fish that you're fighting. They fight you as hard as you fight them. So once you, once you kind of know you have a fish on and start fighting it, you want to keep that fish down, let that rod load fully, and just, and just don't rush them. Let, them. let them do their fighting out away from the boat. And then you're just gonna, you're just gonna keep reeling them, keep reeling them and then you can uh, either have somebody net the fish or, or most of the time when the fish get to that point, they get closer to the boat, they're not as, uh, they're not as riled up as they are when you first hook them. Either you can, you can boat flip them if, you, uh, if they're, I'd say, under three pounds, you can boat flip them just very easily, or you can, uh, you can reach down there and uh, belly land them. It's probably the easiest way to do it, but um, you know, deep cranking is just, it's one of my absolutely favorite techniques. I have caught thousands and thousands of fish over many, many years on a deep diving crankbait. I've caught thousands of fish on this model crankbait, actually. And it's just, it's one of those techniques I love near and dear to my heart. And I think if you incorporate it into your fishing, understand the principles and the basics that I just explained to you, you will also learn to love deep cranking and you'll catch some of those big fish on that deep crankbait. And then maybe you'll either win your tournament or you'll get that picture fish you've always wanted, or whatever, you break your PB. You might break your PB on a deep crankbait. So good luck to you.